blessed day, students, praying that you all are in good health, safe and sound in your own home. I am really glad that you still find time to listen to this video lesson, and that is highly appreciated. Anyways, today is another day to learn more about practical research, quantitative research in your case. So, let us start. Our lesson today is Conceptual Framework. After going through this module, you are expected to differentiate conceptual framework and theoretical framework and to make a conceptual framework from the given situation. What is the meaning of conceptual framework? Conceptual framework is used to understand the place of and inform the direction of a research project. It is the researcher's idea on how the research problem will have to be explored. A conceptual framework uses previous research to determine a theory and methodology for a current research project. At the start of any research study, it is important to consider relevant theory or ideas underpinning the knowledge based on the phenomenon to be researched. Conceptual framework is a graphical representation of your concepts or ideas on the basic structure or components of your research as well as on the relationship of these elements with one another. It embodies the specific direction by which the research will have to be undertaken. It is a graph or non-prose materials, specifically a schematic diagram that shows a well-ordered element of research giving a carefully constructed arrangement of the components of your study. Conceptual framework is broad outline or plan to give shape your research. Now let's proceed to the purposes of conceptual framework. First, it serves as a blueprint or skeleton or plan of your research since everything you want to do in your research, who could be your subjects, what to ask, what analysis to use, etc. should be in here. This will guide you throughout your research. Second, you can also include in your conceptual framework, especially in the narrative part, your observations. This refers to the events, situations you have seen while collecting information or sources. Make sure to describe your observations relative to your topic or title. Third, the conceptual framework will help the readers in understanding your studies, especially your reasons in doing it, and the basis since you are expected to put in some of the sources to support your plan and your whole study. The fourth purpose of conceptual framework. The main purpose of this framework is to connect the ideas and the relationship of the variables to be used in your study. With the use of the arrows and lines, you can show the connection and explain the idea behind those. Fifth, while gathering related literature and study, you can see different information that might lead you in the development of theory that is helpful and practical. Although this is not commonly happening to every paper, there are times that the researcher was able to develop a theory when comparing and contrasting the ideas and variables. Six, since the framework is your plan for the whole research, you can provide possible results and explanations of each here. As mentioned, the framework includes your plan from start to finish, which means that you can also include the possible results. It can be only one result or more expected results and definitely each expected result has an explanation why you as a researcher think that it could be the result. Moving on, let's have the procedure in writing your conceptual framework. 1. What would I want my topic to be? Remember that it should be within your field of specialization, your track, or strand. 2. Where to find articles to support my research. You should 
look for valid and reliable sources in doing a literature review. Start with Google Scholar. 3. Why is my study important? While selecting and collating your literature review, you should also look for variables that are important in your research. You should connect them to your topic. 4. How to do my research? This is where you should create your plan, make a conceptual framework based on the literature you've gathered. Moving on, let's have the format of a conceptual framework. This is an example of a conceptual framework. It uses the common format in presenting the paradigm, which is the IPO or input process output. However, you can also showcase your creativity in presenting your research blueprint. Don't forget that after the diagram, you should always follow it up with an explanation of what is written or included in the diagram. This will help readers in understanding your plan. For our example, you can see that the inputs are students' pretest scores, students' post-test scores, interview guide questions. For the process, administering the pretest and post-test, interviewing select students, and analyzing the results using t-test. For the output, effects of using digitized learning module to select students of Rizal High School Senior High School. What should be included in input? The needed information for your research. The information that mostly comes from external factors or subjects or respondents. And everything that you need for your research, for example, information, materials, paperwork, etc. What is included in the process? The action you will perform to get the information written in the input. What will you do to the information or data you gathered? What is written in output? The expected result after processing the input. Aside from the IPO format, there are other ways on how you can create your conceptual framework diagram. But remember that arrow is used to show cost and effect relationship while solid line is used to show connection or correlation. This rule does not apply to IPO process as it uses arrows to show the process from input to process to output. The proper usage of arrow or solid line should be observed when not using the IPO format since the diagram that will be created might show a more complicated process. Here is an example of conceptual framework by Gachalian et al. 2019. So you can see, in the orange boxes, we have the computer shops near school. That would be the cost. And the effects would be indicated by the arrow, disadvantages to students, advantages to students, and then impact to students. That, uh, that is related as indicated in the solid line, to school performance and attitude towards studying. Now, what is the difference between a conceptual framework and a theoretical framework? A conceptual framework is the researcher's idea on how the research problem will have to be explored. This is founded on the theoretical framework which lies on a much broader scale of resolution. The theoretical framework dwells on time-tested theories that embody the findings of numerous investigations on how phenomena occur. The conceptual framework, on the other hand, embodies the specific direction by which the research will have to be undertaken. The theoretical framework provides a general representation of relationships between things in a given phenomenon. Statistically speaking, the conceptual framework describes the relationship between specific variables identified in the study. The theoretical framework describes a broader relationship between things. When stimulus is applied, response is expected. 
It also outlines the input process and output of the whole investigation. The conceptual framework is also called the research paradigm, according to Aguirre 2015. Theoretical framework deals with the themes or theory related to your research study, and it can contain more than one theory which helps you to analyze your research problem and increase your theoretical existing knowledge, according to Aguirre 2015. Moving on, let's have the pointers in writing a conceptual framework. 1. Familiarize yourself with the objective of the conceptual framework. 2. Base the contents of the conceptual framework on your own understanding of the elements and of the relationship of the research features. 3. See to it that all aspects of the conceptual framework are related to the objective of the research. 4. Let others read your conceptual framework for comments or feedback for improvement purposes, according to Baraceros in 2016. A complete conceptual framework will help you assess the goals for your own research and develop appropriate research questions and methodology. One of the ways it does that is to show you the gaps in the current research. That ends our lesson today. Thank you for listening and see you next time.